Hey, so you know that I know that you don't want to miss any episodes of 10 Minute Murder. And you want them the moment they're released. The best way to make that happen is to follow in whatever app you're listening right now. Depending on the app, it might say follow or subscribe or collect. Just hit that button and be the first to get new episodes. 10 Minute Murder contains depictions of actual crimes. What you are about to hear is real and violent in nature. Discretion is advised. This is 10 Minute Murder. Serial Killer Sunday. Welcome to the brief and bingeable true crime podcast, 10 Minute Murder. My name is Joe. I'm the host, and I appreciate you being here today. Now, this is something we haven't done in quite a while, a Serial Killer Sunday episode. I've done a bunch of stories on serial killers, but just as the regular weekday episodes. It's been a while since I put out an extra Sunday episode, a Serial Killer Sunday. So that is what this is. A reminder before we get started with it, you can send story ideas to me by emailing them to 10minutemurder at gmail.com. And today is one of those stories I got emailed to me, a request to do a Serial Killer Sunday on this specific person. So you can do that yourself, 10minutemurder at gmail.com. Or if you are connected with 10 Minute Murder on social media, you can do it there too. And if you aren't connected with 10 Minute Murder on social media, you should probably do that. That's where I post visuals to some of the episodes we talk about here on the podcast. And I avoid the bloody crime scene pictures because I don't personally want to see that. I don't need nightmare fuel. And I'm sure if you're into that sort of thing, you can ask Jeeves and find all that stuff. But what I post is mainly just what the killer looks like. Sometimes the victims and the locations, if that happens to be part of the story. I'll leave links to where you can find 10 Minute Murder on social media in the show notes of this episode. Or just as easily, you could go to like Facebook and type 10 Minute Murder and it'll pop right up. Today, we're talking about Lonnie Franklin. He was responsible for the murder of at least 10. He started killing in the 1980s and then apparently took a break. He resumed killing in 2002, earning him the nickname The Grim Sleeper. Lonnie David Franklin Jr. was born August 30th, 1952. He grew up in South Central Los Angeles. In 1975, he was dishonorably discharged from the Army for a conviction of gang-raping a 17-year-old girl in Stuttgart, Germany. In that attack, Lonnie and two other servicemen stopped to ask the girl for directions to some place they were headed. They offered her a ride home, and when she got in the car, they put a knife to her throat, drove to a field, and raped her. She kept her wits during the attack enough to pretend to actually be interested in Lonnie. He gave her his phone number. Police used that number to track him down. They also took pictures of her while she was being raped, a habit that Lonnie continued later in life when he became a serial killer, terrorizing and murdering women in Los Angeles. In 1989, he was also convicted of two charges of theft, one charge of a misdemeanor assault, and one charge of battery. In the mid-1980s, the LAPD figured there was a serial killer targeting black women who were drug users and sex workers. The South Side Slayer is what they called him, and was believed to be responsible for stabbing and strangling at least 13 between 1983 and late 1985. Around South Central LA, they called them the Strawberry Murders, Strawberry being slang for a woman who exchanges sex for drugs. There was a lot of criticism of the LAPD for not forming a task force to catch this serial killer. Community leaders argued that when Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was targeting women in upscale areas of L.A. and San Francisco, significant resources were made available. But since these were poor black sex workers and drug addicts, they didn't care. The LAPD denied these claims, but did quickly go on to form the Southside Slayer Task Force. The reward for information increased from $10,000 to $25,000. By January 1986, 15 murders had been linked to the case because of lack of results and information, plus a theory that maybe up to four killers were responsible for those murders, the task force wound down later in the year. Over the next few years, other killers in the area were found to be responsible for some of the Southside Slayer murders. One group of those murders from that time were committed with a 25 caliber handgun, by 1987, seven victims were linked to that same gun. 
Fast forward to May 2007. The killing of Janisha Peters was linked through DNA evidence to at least 11 unsolved murders in L.A. The LAPD and Secrets formed a new task force to investigate. The next year, they announced a $500,000 reward to help catch the killer, a killer that they were now calling the Grim Sleeper. In March of 2009, the sole survivor of an attack by the Grim Sleeper gave a description of a black man in his early 30s, neat, tidy, kind of geeky, black polo shirt tucked into khakis. She also gave a vehicle description. Police labs didn't find a direct match of DNA in their database, but did find similar DNA to Christopher Franklin, Lonnie Franklin's son. He was obviously too young to be the killer they were after, but they knew that they were on the right track. An undercover officer pretended to be a waiter at a restaurant where Lonnie was eating. He didn't eat the crust of the pizza, and they used that pizza crust to get his DNA to make the match. Lonnie Franklin was taken in for questioning. Okay, well, we're working on an investigation, and uh, there's a warrant for your arrest, charging a count of murder. Count of murder? Yes, sir. I'm sure you've probably uh, heard about DNA. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well, your DNA was identified uh, in relation to this young lady's death. Okay. No, I'm just saying, that's what you're telling me, so that's all I can say. How could that happen? I don't know. Okay, in 2003, this young was found killed. Have you ever seen her? No, I haven't. You don't know that lady? No, no. You've never seen her? No, I haven't. Mr. Franklin, just like the other one, your DNA was found on this young lady. Okay. Is there a way to explain that? No, it's not. Think about it. Think hard. No, I don't know. 2002. This young lady was then. Do you recognize her? No, no. Princess. You've never princess. seen never seen her before? Mm-mm. And this and by you telling me that you don't know these people or had know any way that their your DNA got on their bodies. Mm-hmm. You're insulting my intelligence. I'm sorry, I don't know. I do not know. Okay. In nineteen eighty eight. This young lady. Alicia Alexander. My it's all, DNA it's all linked to you. Now, Mr. Franco, I mean, you watch these shows. You tell me once, you know, maybe you met the gal and you had a little relationship with her and she turns up dead. You know, oh, maybe a coincidence. I just showed you, I mean, your coincidences are getting pretty slim. Wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. This young lady, Lucretia Jefferson. No. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you something. Do you, uh, do you know what DNA is? Yeah, it's the blood, saliva, okay. anything, any body fluids they make contact. Okay, and it's 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 like a fingerprint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, only one person has that DNA. Okay, so you you understand it probably better than I do. Yeah, and, I understand, uh, but I don't know these people. So, okay. okay. Yeah, you got five or six people here. Well, and I so don't far, know. so far. Yeah. From me, uh, yeah, you know. The police laid out photo after photo that DNA evidence links Lonnie to, but he denies knowing any of them. After a while, he begins to insult the victims being shown to him. This young lady here, her name is Bernita Sparks. Wow, she looked heavy, (laughs) said. Why? No, I just said she looked fat. This young lady, her name is Henrietta Wright. Go ahead, take a close look. No recollection at all. But ugly, I don't know. Her. So what? <laughs> but ugly, I don't know. Her. Mm. Mm. Sorry, I don't know. Her. So if I told you you were connected to the deaths of all of these ladies, who do you think Detective Kilcoin and I would be sitting here looking at? Oh, okay, you're looking at me. <laughs> You look at me. I mean, do you? I mean, do you agree? Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Yes. All of these people that you say you don't know through scientific evidence are all pointing the finger at Lonnie David Franklin Jr. Sit there and look at their faces, all staring at you, pointing that finger at you. You creep out, you pick up these young ladies uh, that are out working Western or Figaro or whatever in the middle of the night. You have sex with them, you kill them, and then you dump their bodies in alleys throughout the city of Los Angeles. 
most of them near, not too far from your house. It's like a dog pissing on a fire hydrant. That's you. You're leaving your mark every single time you do this. The science has caught up with you. Mr. Franklin, your signature is on every one of these young ladies. Well, we also know, know that you cruise Western Avenue looking for whores every night. Every night. Okay. Well, not every night. Not every night. You were sad. You were out there last night. The cops shine their light at you and you skedaddled on home. You were out there a couple of nights ago, Saturday night. Oh, I was on. Oh, I saw the cop when he shined his light on me. Uh -huh. I was on 48th uh -huh. right and uh, 48th and Western. Okay. Right, right. 48th and Western because I pulled over to use my. If he didn't notice, I was using my cell phone. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what the news calls you? You tell me what the news calls you. The uh, Reaper? The what? The Reaper? Grand Reaper? Something? The Grim Sleeper. Oh, okay. I know it's something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, saw it on, I saw it on TV. I look at TV. Oh, of course you do. Yeah, I got TV in every room. Well, well, there you go. All right. Yeah, it is. So, and scene. here we are, oh, sitting here. Paul and Dennis are sitting here having a chat with the Grim Sleeper. And that is Mr. Lonnie... David Franklin Jr. It's not me, no more. Sorry, it's not me. Okay, well then, how did how did your how did your DNA juice get on these bodies? That's the first time, and hopefully the last time, I hear the term DNA juice used. I only played you a few minutes of the tape, but the investigator says it a few times. While he was being interviewed, police obtained a search warrant and were going through Lonnie's house. In all, investigators found over 1,000 photos and several hundred hours of video in his home. The images show mainly black women of a wide age range, from teenagers to middle age and older, often nude. Police believe Franklin took many of the pictures, which show both unconscious and conscious individuals dating back 30 years. His first confirmed victim was Deborah Jackson in August 1985. Franklin apparently paused for 14 years after his last known crime in 1988, and his next confirmed murder occurred in 2002 because of that, he was nicknamed the Grim Sleeper. Investigators have said they believe there are other as yet unidentified victims during that time frame. The last confirmed murder was in January 2007. Franklin was charged with 10 murders and one attempted murder and held without bail. On May 5, 2016, after nearly three months of trial and a day and a half of jury deliberation, Franklin was convicted on all counts. A month later, he was sentenced to death. On March 28, 2020, Lonnie Franklin was found dead in his prison cell. As of this recording, the autopsy results have not yet been made public, but there were no signs of trauma. That's today's 10-minute murder, the brief and bingeable true crime podcast. Thanks for listening today. And if you have a story you'd like for me to cover, email it to 10minutemurder at gmail.com. Connect with me on social media and be sure to tell your friends that are into quick true crime stories like this one about the podcast. And lastly, if you are an Apple Podcasts user, be sure to review and rate five stars. Doing that helps the show grow and reach more and more people. Thank you for listening to 10 Minute Murder. Have a good night. <laughs>